that. So this is exciting. I just bought the Plasma 65 Titanium brand Harbor Freight Plasma Cutter. And uh, we're going to do an unboxing and uh, give it a shot. We're going to see how good this thing can cut. They say it cuts up to one inch thick metal clean and can cut up to an inch and three sixteenths, which is insane. So, I mean, I'll probably honestly never cut anything over half inch, but uh, we've got Andrew here from ArcDroid. <laughs> This is going to be good because he has one of his machines here. Unfortunately, we can't with. unbox it. It's already unboxed. And uh, that's totally okay. But uh, man, this is going to be fun, man. I'm excited. Uh, well, I'm, I'm excited to see you working for you. Oh, yeah. We have made several tabs this week for a certain project that's over there that I can't really show you. But man, we could have used this thing a dozen times this week. So, well, sorry I didn't get here sooner. No, it's okay. <laughs> next time we'll, we'll play with it today, and then next time we'll put it in service. So. Yep, for sure. We need to do the calibration sequence. This is the, uh, you know, the reason the reason for this is math, right? Mm -hmm. This uh, this has to do a complex set of equations to figure out where the tip is at any time, right? So frac the glove shot is the math that it needs for for getting the right coordinates and everything like that is highly dependent on this length and this angle and things like that. Mm -hmm. And every plasma cutter is a little bit different. So that, that distance between this tip and the mounting surface is going to be different for your torch or my torch right. or his torch, right? So that's what the calibration sequence is all about. And we have this stylus, which is in known distance because we make it, yep. right? So you, what you do is you do a first, first run with the stylus, and then you do a second run with the, the plasma cutter. And it's actually pretty simple. You're going to you know, calibrate, and I know, but it has a little sled. sled. And this is, this is what you used to run along the calibration triangle. So we're gonna set this up. First thing it's gonna do is gonna home. It needs to set its set its baseline. So it goes back to the back to the main stops and we're good to go. So the sled's plugged in, stylus is on but not plugged in. Next step is you come over here and this little stylus has a hole in the tip of it. And so does the so does the uh, um, plasma torch, right? And that's the only thing that's common to plasma torches is they all have a hole in the middle. So that's what we're trying to calibrate to is that little point. So bring it over, lower it down. So it's lo lowered down on the point. So now it's the sled and the, the sled and the point are together. Going in, and then we just simply slowly go down here. Now you're, for, you're doing that yourself. Yeah, I'm moving that smoothly and you'll see it, it picks up on a bunch of points as it goes and it uses those as reference for the next round. So, and then it's simply just do the other two rails in the same, same manner, okay. okay. Next. So the knob controls the height? Yeah, the knob, the knob is used, the knife, uh, the, the knob is used for the, uh, the Z axis, so that you can crank it up and down, right? And you know, and we try to do our best to get you, you know, nice graphical information that makes sense to people. This is a nice flat table, by the way. It's actually surprisingly smooth, so. And all it's doing is it's picking up on these holes, which are a known spacing apart, right, and in a known position, and calculating the error around all of them, right? So, so we've done that. Now all we do is swap out to the torch, which took all of, what, 35 seconds yeah. to, to <laughs> so one of the things about this is setup is easy so you do the same thing with the torch yeah or is it do it on itself you know you do, do the same thing with the torch exactly the same math and now we've lowered, you know, the cone just goes up into the tip, right? So now, now I know that cone is in exactly the same spot as the tip of the plasma torch, right. right? So it's perfectly lined up. And we just do the, you know, same, same three rails as before. Same sort of nice, slow, easy movement. Give it a 
slot there. And the last rail. Now it's going to solve. So actually, we got a really nice, really, really nice uh, result there. So an error of only 0.25. Oh. That is really good. So now, next, save the settings. And now it'll rehome and reset itself. Oh, that's so cool. You might want to even figure out a way to. Yeah, that's actually, saying, like, honestly, you know what you do? Go to the Home Depot, buy a roller stand. And then and it just oh, yeah, goes yeah. back and forth across the roller stand. Right? That. So super easy way to do it. So there we have it. You are calibrated, which means we can we can cut some stuff. We can we can cut, we can now we can now cut some stuff, and it sh you know round things should be round, and square things should be square. <laughs> Try out the new machine. See how the Harbor Freight plasma yeah, cutter I'm works. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen the 65 in in real life. I've seen the 45 before, but the Harbor Freight 65 seems to be pretty beefy. So that's the next thing. We now have to attach the plasma cutter. To the machine it's just a two-wire interface right. right and in this case that one's got a port on it that we can get the wires off if it doesn't you just tap into the the trigger switch right you open up your handle find the two wires that go to the trigger a couple of scotch locks and some right. some, some extra wire and, and you good to go yeah which we set it so now once it's home right it knows it knows the difference between having the stylus plugged in. I think if you plug the stylus in, it'll recognize that so you do tracing. Right? And then when you unplug that, now it uses the offsets for the torch. Yep. Right? So it knows that extra distance or angle change or anything like that compared to the stylus. Right? So, and you won't need to do this very often. Um, you know, if something screwed, you know, like you get this banged up or you change the torch or something like that, right. you'll need to redo it. But you shouldn't have to. Once you've calibrated, you should be good to go for a while. So zero it out, pick the circles. Right? And let's say you're doing inch and a half tube, right? So I'm going to do inch, 1.5 inches, right? So you got it, and then... Is it all in millimeters? No, no, now it's in inches. I just changed it to freedom units, don't worry. <laughs> so so I got an inch and a half, right? Um, round circle in the middle that's going to cut in the middle, right? And then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put a square around it. I'm going to change the origin so the square sits around the middle. And I'm going to do height, 1.5. I'm going to do width, say, 4.5, all right? And then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put a 0.75 radius on it. Oh, hell. All right? And then I'm going to, another circle, I'm going to put another one over here, all right? And this is just going to be sort of point, you know, point 0.6. So you're putting a 5 eighths bolt in there or something, all right? Flip that around. And I'm gonna make sure that it's in the right place by typing in dimensions, right? So, and then minus 1.5. So you, you can do, eh, no, let's make it minus 1.6. Right. There we go, that looks about in the middle, doesn't it? That looks close. Yeah, and then I'm gonna come over here and do another one. Same math. So you just made two brackets on one piece? Yeah. For round two? Yep. <laughs> So will it cut out that circle for which see that's my, right that's the thing it will right now it'll cut in the order i traced and i didn't trace in the, the, right, the perfect order right but if you go over here that button will order them from the inside out got right? it so now what it's going to do is it'll blow that hole blow that hole blow that hole and oh, blow the outside on. and you'll get two symmetrical brackets there you go oh wow hours. right that that's, that that's a quickie cheat that's a really quick, easy, you don't need a lot of skill, you don't need CAD, yeah. but you get tabs that you want and yeah. they fit right where you want them. That's cool. So That's so cool. That's what I was wondering because I remember it goes by order. And I was yeah. like, how do you, what happened? And it, actually, even the little things, like I screwed up here, like I actually have the, the cut on the wrong side of that. You can go back in here and edit that. I've got the, the, so I need to flip that around so the lead is on the bottom. And I'll even put the entry up here on the top so it's, or on the end so that it actually clean material before it goes as opposed to trying to strike an arc right yeah. on the, where that hole was right you know and you can even do things like make this make you know 1.8 you know and, and, and you'll have a little bit of it you know you get a little bit wider and just all you come in and i can that we can do by cutting a straight line across it right so pick this one and then go all right so it'll cut that off so you can you can 
get a little beef on your tabs. Yeah. Right? Dude, this is... This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is it's, amazing. It's, it's to film. This yeah. is the shiniest screen yeah. on the planet. <laughs> we're just gonna, I'm going to you know, zoom in here. Here's what we're going to make, right? This is that little tab that I just cheated on, right? right. I'm going to do a quick little dry run here with the torch off. He's going to show you what you're doing. All right. So. It figured out its own center point. It went down and touched back up, right? Yeah. That, so that basically, the probe is so that it gets the right, because the material is not always going to be flat, right? right. So you want to start as close to zero as possible at every time. So it comes down, probes each time, lifts up to the to, to the, um, to the cut height, and then does the thing. This is plasma settings. This isn't our droid settings. So you probably need to right. We're at 46 volt, uh, 46 amps, and we're only we're cutting less than that. So we can turn that down a lot, okay. and you can, and and then we can turn the speed up a little bit. So oh, basically, wow. you want to kind of move as fast as you can and still blow all the way through, and that'll give you the cleanest cut. Okay. Um, and that's that's plasma settings. So you, you you'll you'll learn that once you make, play with the machine yeah. a little bit more and whatever. Have to take some notes. Like but the, the nice thing, like this stuff, it doesn't you know it just, it just breaks off, right? You can just hammer it off. Like you don't need to grind that off. As long as you hit it on the edges, uh, it, it pops off. Right? That's sweet. So Dude, that's, that's still cool. a little bit warm. <laughs> yeah. The other thing you'll notice is, and this is something that is plasma related. No plasma does small holes well, right? Because what happens is you begin to burn. A, like you're cutting a little, you know, uh, right. three eighths hole or something like that. As you begin to burn around it. The, the material falls away and the flame bends to the empty space, right? So you end up with a not quite round hole. Right. So if you're if you're doing like you're doing a header flange or something like that, always burn your holes smaller than they're supposed to be and drill them out. Right. Yeah, because they're not going to be square, right? So if you're and and the the rule is never never go any smaller than the thickness of your, your material. So you know preferably twice the thickness of your material, right? So you can't blow you can't blow a quarter hole a quarter inch hole in a half inch place. It's you not know, it will it'll be a mess, <laughs> you know. So making the tab for one thing, just drill the hole up the So yeah, like this this was a like I, I made this a point six inch hole. I got it pretty damn close. <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, we're we're within a sixty fourth less than a sixty fourth of an inch of that. Damn. So you know. All right, we're not done playing with the plasma cutter just yet. I want to try my hand at just cutting some random pieces of metal I have laying around. It works very well with the arc droid. I was very impressed with that. So now this thing claims to cut up to one inch thick material, which is crazy. I don't even have anything that thick laying around the shop. And it says it'll do up to inch and three sixteenths severance cut, which means it'll cut it, but it won't be as clean. Uh, this thing retails for around 1300 bucks. You can get it at Harbor Freight. It's our titanium line. And uh, yeah, so far so good. But we're about to try it right here and I'll show you guys just how well it works. All right, right now the machine just turned all the way up to 65 amps. Uh, it's overkill for everything I have here, but, you know, I just got to try it out. So this is a piece of C-channel. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. I uh, got a piece of eighth inch angle aluminum. Then we got a piece of double D steering shaft. Then what looks like a piece of quarter inch just flat steel. So uh, we're going to give it a shot and uh, see how it cuts. As expected, it cut that no problem. And that is a nice cut. Dang. All right, let's try this aluminum. I've never plasma cut aluminum before. So this is, uh, this is new to me. Again, no problem. Had a cool blue flame. All right, let's try the steering shaft. This is probably five eighths or so thick. So let's just see, I'll cut a nice straight line, or try to.
This is a piece of quarter inch flat steel. It's gonna make, I'm gonna try and just freehand a tab and just see how well it works. That is so nice. And then it can go faster. All right, we'll go faster. Let's cut this off. That's a quarter inch, so obviously no problem for this machine. Damn, I wish I had something thicker. One point one four. It's just over an inch thick. So let's see if the plasma cutter has any trouble. Right now it's turned all the way up, 65 amps. Let's see what happens. There you go. I just made a little stubby hammer. That was me probably moving. I probably moved too slow for that, but damn. It did it no problem over an inch thick. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope this was informative in some sort of way, uh, but I'm very impressed with this machine. It cut that hammer, which was over an inch thick and the arc droid can't wait to get it set up and start using it on a permanent basis here but uh thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time